Hello and uh, welcome back to Dozzy's Television Workshop. It's part two of the Pi 169 chassis Model 92 um, video. And uh, yeah, it's been a bit of a roller coaster so far. Anyway, after the first video, a couple of people left comments. Very nice. Um, Richard H100. Um, I thought the overwinding insulation breaking down when hot. 370 ohms. Interesting to find out the real fault. Um, not quite sure we get the 370 ohms, but don't panic. We'll have a look at the uh, circuit diagram in a minute. Don't think it's the insulation breaking down because uh, surely that would give us less EHT. Uh, and we're getting a lot. Anyway, I think it's uh, the diode breaking down, but it's masking another fault. OK. Um, the other comment was from radios hyphen tv that's chris he uh, has the uh, radios hyphen tv.co.uk website um great site the vrat forum hey anyway, hi andy as ever another excellent video lots of analysis with the line tuning capacitor be breaking down thus causing the eht to go too high that's what i'm hoping chris mm. so yeah probably not anyway looking forward to the next installment don't leave us dangling like you did on the Sony repair. I'm going to cheat slightly here because, unfortunately, the first thing I did um, 10 days ago now was to change the line tuning capacitor. Um, its job is to resonate with the line coils. So normally you have the line scan coils and this is in parallel with them. And that allows... Uh, when the line stage stops conducting, fly back and it gives you the scan ramp. Um, so, yeah, that going open circuit usually gives us skyrocketing EHT. On a colour set that's already got 25,000 volts, that EHT can get so large, um, it can actually puncture the glass of the set as the EHT arcs through the neck to the scan coils or wherever else it can find Earth. Um, and as soon as that happens, the CRT goes down to air. Um, I've had it happen uh, a number of times in my career, professionally doing this job when it was worth doing, on a Philips G11 and a Philips G8. And I think as well a Bang & Olsen. That was, I was very young then. Anyway, so what we did, we replaced the capacitors with um, these CBB type. I also replaced the boost capacitor as well. Um, despite the fact I changed them both last time when I fitted the transformer originally. So I put in these CBB types, they're polyester, rated to 2000 volts. Um, yeah, and the fault remained after 20 minutes or so, varying on the temperature of the workshop, to be honest, that EHT would climb and climb and climb um, to over 20 kilovolts. Well, no, 20 kilovolts, not over, but 20 kilovolts where it would stay. Um, at that time, you saw in the last video, I was measuring the EHT with the old faithful B&K EHT probe, and I just had the cap on the end, so obviously we weren't getting a picture. Um, anyway, subsequently, I was worried about the uh, dielectric chemistry of the capacitor, and I thought, mm, uh, perhaps it's not good enough. So, I built myself these monstrosities, uh, a boost capacitor, and a harmonic tuning capacitor. I'm not quite sure which is which. I did write on the back. But I made them out of um, two and three kilovolt disc ceramics uh, to make up the value. Horrible things. Um, same problem. Mm. Okay. Then if we move over to Big Clive Cam. What's actually installed at the moment are these extremely expensive capacitors. Uh, they're rated, uh, these are uh, polyester again. These are rated to three kilovolts. Um, um, one of those was almost seven pounds. It was a lot of money. So they're in there at the moment. So, um, and sure enough, the fault is still present. Ah, uh, well. When I was testing the set with a cap off, obviously I couldn't see what was going on on the screen. So I have subsequently run the set with the cap on now. And that's given us another clue. When the EHT is climbing, the width doesn't change. When EHT rises, 
the beam is uh, it's more difficult to deflect it's because it's being accelerated harder accelerated faster in fact the um, scan coils you have to put more magnetic flux I suppose um, to move the beam so the scan coils require more current so if the EHT rises we'd expect the width to to shrink and it's not it's being it, it doesn't move a much at all considering we're seeing you know another uh, seven or eight thousand volts you'd expect that width to creep in and it doesn't it stays solid so we're a bit worried about the drive to the um the life stage so sundog wrote e eht appears to be rising the width would appear to reduce so both eht and line drive are increasing proportionally now we do see that shift in the line drive waveform it becomes more positive so that would give us more drive uh, what happens to the boost voltage when the change occurs we're going to measure that um, uh, can you point me towards a full schematic where well, we've done that that's in the library so um where are we he then says looking at the line drive circuitry i see they found the need for width stabilization using a vdr a vdr is a voltage dependent resistor um not something you really see anymore not in modern electronics anyway i don't even know if they're still made maybe um negative feedback works as well as long as the phase shift is within limits so the transformer is generating a negative voltage, which is holding the line stage uh, bias in the right place. Uh, so he's saying negative feedback works well as long as the phase shift is within limits. Once beyond, it becomes positive feedback. And then we could be running away, which may be what we're seeing. You mentioned the grid goes a little positive. The purpose of that feedback through R85 and 86 and C71 is to drive the grid, grid more negative as a control. Yeah. Let's look at that. So um, let us uh, quickly look at the schematic. OK, so our boost capacitor is C73. That's where our set boost voltage is across. Uh, we'll be measuring that voltage in a minute. Um, and C72, I think, is our line harmonic tuning capacitor, which is the one we're concerned about. So I've changed both of these. And we still have the fault. So, see the line scan coils here. We've also got C74, 180 nan. That's the S correction capacitor. Um, that is actually 150 nan in a uh, 17 inch set. Um, but that is also been replaced. Uh, so, yeah, we're good. Right. So, where are we going to measure? We are going to measure our boost voltage. We are going to put an oscilloscope on pin two and look at the drive waveform to the PL504. And if we scroll up here, here is our width circuit here. So this is our line oscillator. And this is our width compensation circuit here. This is the VDR in question. So at this point here, um, we're going to put an oscilloscope on there and uh, and see what happens as the fault develops see what information that gives us right back to it okay so uh, let's see what we've got uh, set up here right um, I have put a bit of um, silicon uh, insulation around the rectifier um, that's purely to uh, stop it fizzing and crackling when that EHT does uh, rise up and doing any damage to Maybe some of the semiconductors and also stops the internet catching fire which is very good uh, you'll see it's also connected back to the uh, tubes final anode now so uh, we can see a picture uh, i've got a mirror at the front you can't see that on camera sadly but uh, take my word for it the width doesn't move okay so uh, what are we measuring uh, here's our boost capacitor so this meter here is measuring our boost voltage we expect that to be in the region region of um, about 800 volts uh, over to the oscilloscope, the blue trace at the top is the line drive to the grid of the PL504 line output valve. And the yellow trace is the earthier end of the width VDR. 
So let's uh, switch on and once again, wait for the fault to manifest. Okay, boost voltage is currently 150 volts. We expect that to rise as the line stage starts. And it is cold in here this evening, so uh, I suspect it may take a, a number of minutes for the fault to uh, occur, but uh, rest assured, I'm, I'll spare you that. I'll uh, fast forward all the way through it for you. Uh, line oscillator is running, and there goes our boost voltage 302. You can also see um, a slight deflection there on the yellow trace, which is the um, width VDR. So there's obviously some signal there already. Haven't got a picture yet. Yes, we have. Here we go. Coming up now. Okay. Ooh, width is... There it is. Wow. Okay. Turn that down a little. Maybe move it down a little. trigger a little bit. That's better. Okay. So now we can just uh, sit and wait. I wonder actually if I just adjust the brightness to the set. It's not really changing the width feedback signal much, is it? Okay, well, and we've got uh, 737 volts of boost. So uh, let's sit back and wait for the fold. Okay, this is interesting. I've just got the hot air gun out. And um, yeah, a couple of things to note. That width signal's getting very big now. But as I warm things up, watch. Let's switch that off so you can hear me. As I warm things up, just watch the boost voltage there as well. Whoa. Okay, we're at a thousand volts. Not seeing the high EHT yet. I can normally tell because you get a little bit of a little bit of corona discharge where the leads just against the chassis uh, down here. Slight smell of ozone. And uh, boost voltage has fallen again. Where is? Width signal is now huge, and there's the fault. You can may be able to just see the corona discharge on the lead. Okay. This is why I need some freezer spray that we haven't got anymore. I'm just going to switch that off because of the smell of ozone. Big Clive will love me for that, won't he? Um, so, I'm sort of heating this area here. Just wondering if C71, which is in the width control chain, uh, decouples that, is, uh, is giving me problems. Okay, well, well, that'll do, I think. We've proved our point a little bit. Let me know what you think in the comments, as usual. Be lovely. And... Um, I'm going to take their capacitor out and see if that puts it right. Okay, thanks for watching. See you later.
Look, Mum, 393 subscribers.